Hey everybody, let's let's get this on. We're in section 12.2, and in section 12.2, we're learning about addition and subtraction of vectors. Now there are two goals that you're going to see pop up on your screen here, um, and they both have to do with finding the sum of two vectors. The first is that you're going to learn to find the sum of two vectors geometrically. All right, and then the second goal is that you're going to learn to find the sum of two vectors arithmetically. So two standpoints that you're going to approach finding the sum or, sum or difference of two vectors from, a geometrical standpoint and an arithmetic standpoint. Let me show you how that works. All right, I have on screen here a couple of vectors, u and v, and I've, I've got the actual vectors graphed, and I'm actually going to write down the component or the column vector form of each as well real quick. There you go. Now, let's talk about the geometrical standpoint of how you add two vectors together first. So I'm going to show you just with these pictures how you add two vectors. And then we'll look at the arithmetic standpoint, which is going to use the actual components of the two vectors in order to find out what the sum of the two vectors is. Geometrically speaking, what the sum of two vectors is, is another vector that would get you from the beginning directly from the beginning of the first vector to the end of the second vector if those vectors were placed in such a way that the initial point of the second vector is placed at the terminal point of the first vector or if they're placed head to tails as your book says like so all right so there you go and then the vector that would represent the sum of those two vectors would be this vector right here. Now we've used the term resultant vector already in this chapter and that's what this vector is. The sum of two vectors gives you a resultant vector that goes initial, again from the beginning of the first one to the end of the second one if they're placed heads to tails as so. Alright, now let's look at what the component of the sum of those two vectors happens to be. That vector u plus v is going three units right and three units down. So the column vector in form of that would be three, negative three. And here's where we get into the arithmetic standpoint here. I hope this is very simple for you to make this conclusion. If you look at the component forms for the, the column vector form for the original two vectors u and v, what could you do with those that would give you these numbers from this column form, well, simply you add them together, right? If you add the horizontal components, 4 plus negative 1 is positive 3. Add the vertical components, 1 plus negative 4 is negative 3. When you're adding two vectors, all you got to do is add the corresponding components with one another. All right, there you go. No problem right there, right? Now, let's look at what it means to subtract two vectors as well. I want to go back to the same two vectors, u and v. And what we're going to find then is the difference u minus v. And again, we're going to approach this as a geometrical problem and as an arithmetic problem. And as a geometric problem, it turns out you can't physically subtract one vector from another, not in the typical sense. You can add vectors, but you can't really subtract them. However, we can do something that's pretty common sense. You guys ought to recognize just from your time with algebra that if you want to find the difference between two numbers u and v, you can find that difference by finding the sum of u with the opposite of v. And that's going to help us with this geometrical standpoint. We don't really subtract one vector from another, but what we do is we add the opposite of the second vector to the first vector. And so for our geometric problem then, let's go ahead and create a vector that's the opposite a vector v, like so. And I hope you recall that to make the opposite of a vector, you just change the direction of the vector. That's all that that does. Okay? And so in order to add u with the opposite of v, of course, we're going to place the opposite of v heads to tails with u. We'll place it at the, uh, the end of vector u. And then the resultant vector of that would be this. There's our u minus v. 
Now, what's the component form or the uh, column vector form of u minus v? Well, you can see here that it goes 5 units to the right, and it goes 5 units up. It's coincidence that both those numbers are the same. But, now approaching this from an arithmetic standpoint, it's very easy to come up with the column vector form for the difference two vectors if you will simply just subtract the horizontal components and the vertical components for the original two vectors. 4, whoops, 4 minus negative 1 is 5, and 1 minus negative 4 also gives you 5. Great. So let's see a couple of examples here. This one says, given the vector 6i plus j minus 7k and 3i minus 2k, find this and this, in which we're combining two skills, we're, we're, combining, we're combining scalar multiplication with your adding or subtracting two vectors. And you just got to be able to follow order of operations to do this, very simple to do. Alright, so let's start with negative 4p plus q. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to multiply the vector p by a scalar negative 4, and then whatever the result is, we're going to add q with that. Alright, so of course multiplying this uh, vector by a scalar means multiplying each of its components by that scalar, in this case distributing the negative 4 is essentially what we're doing, and then you can take care of the addition. You notice there's no j in the second vector, that means the y component is 0, but it's got an x component and a z component there. Alright, so go ahead and take care of that real quick, and then you may as well, because you know what to do, take care of 1 half times the difference of q and p. And then check your answers for me. There you go for the first example, and here's the work for the second example. which sometimes you would leave in this form with the scalar out front, and then of course you can go ahead and multiply by the scalar. Questions? I think you got this. Now I do want to throw in one more example here because there's one more concept that I want to talk about. I wish I could write in bold with the markers that I'm using and everything. I can't. Um, and the reason why I say that is because in this problem where it says find the values of x and y such that the sum of these three vectors equals zero, this zero right here is actually a vector called the zero vector. It's not just a normal zero, it's a zero vector. Which, since we're dealing with two dimensional vectors, that means the zero vector would be a vector that goes zero units horizontally and zero units vertically. Make sense? All right, so if we add these three vectors together, it's supposed to give us a zero vector right there. Now the rest is just algebra, and you'll see exactly the way this is going to work out. Let's set up an equation that shows that we're adding those three vectors together first and setting it equal to this. Now one more detail I want to mention, and then I want you to go ahead and try to solve this. There's a couple of things I'll mention. Um, if you ever have vectors that add up to give you the zero vector, um, and let's say that those vectors happen to represent forces as they would in a physics class or something, um, then those forces that those vectors represent would be said to be at equilibrium. All right. Now the other thing I wanted to mention to you really quickly is that you're going to notice that when you add the x components together, they're going to equal zero, but there's a, an x and a y there. All right, the horizontal components, I should probably say. And when you add the vertical components together, there's an x and a y there, meaning you're solving a system of equations right now. Easy enough for you to do, though. Go ahead and make the equations using your horizontal components and your vertical components. Solve that system of equations for x and y. There's the original system. I'm going to set everything up so that I can use the elimination method to solve this. Like such. And then, of course, using the elimination method, probably the easiest thing would be to multiply the bottom equation by 3 and then add the equations together which will give you your value of x, which of course then you can plug back in to find your value of y. Alright, that's how you find the sum or the difference of two vectors. Thanks for watching. Let's keep going.